Okay, just like the title says, uh, this is the re my opinion on the reality of the bow drill and friction fire in general. I got a lot of videos that uh, I do the bow drill in and uh, you know do it under you know various conditions and stuff like that. But um, it's my own personal opinion that uh, bow drill is not reliable. You get a lot of failures if you go out into the woods thinking that um, you're going to go out and start a fire by friction any time of the year anywhere in the world uh, under any conditions I think you're unprepared and I think you're fooling yourself I know there's probably guys out there saying that uh, well I never thought that bow drill was a thing to depend on or I never thought I could go out in the woods and just uh, go without anything and, and make a fire and do it every time well I wasn't like you <laughs> whenever I first got into this stuff uh, I, I believed all the stuff that the writers put in their books one thing I found out that is that uh, a lot of writers are full of crap um, they've never tried it you can tell by going out and trying it yourself I do the bow drill because I I have fun with it it's uh, something that the natives had to do because they didn't have fire steels matches flint and steel at that time as soon as those things came available flint and steel they switched to that so I'm not trying to say don't uh, practice the bow drill I do it all the time. I love it. It's it's fun. But what I am trying to do is encourage those of you who think that it's the be all end all, you know, the pinnacle of woodcraft skills or bushcraft skills or whatever. It's not. Being prepared is much more important than knowing how to uh, make a bow drill fire. You know, this isn't something that I'd rely on, and this will show you why. If you've never done this, this will show you why. It's not impossible. I've seen guys do it several times. I've seen guys fail at it several times. It's not impossible, but it's not guaranteed either. So here it is. Never cut green trees, living trees, guys. That's that's against every bushcraft rule in the universe. Don't you know that somebody came along and cut this tree and uh, just destroyed it? The beauty. How probably start crying here in a minute oh wait huh. I guess they didn't cut that tree oh I'll be darned gee dang it in nature trees fall I'll be darned dang nature speaking of which I'm about to cut a green tree I'm gonna emulate nature <laughs> Grandpa's gonna have a cow. All right, so here's what I got: baton, drill, possibly hearth, right here, cordage, hopefully. This is mulberry, I left the leaves on it so you guys can see that. And backup cordage, willow. It's late enough in the season and it's been dry enough that uh, I probably won't be able to get the cordage off in good shape. So here we go. Oh, I forgot. Handhold, where did it go? Here it is. All right, at this point you're probably already beginning to realize that you've already expended a lot of energy using just a knife especially if you're using a stone knife which is uh, much more difficult so you're gonna see the absolute necessity to bring good fire starting equipment I don't got no base this green stuff you don't need it too much
I have my doubts that this is going to work. Not the handhold, but uh, the natural portage. Point being is uh, if you got a knife, you're probably going to have portage. If you don't have a knife, you're unprepared. If uh, you don't have a knife and you're unprepared, you're probably going to have boots or shoes, which have laces. If you have Velcro shoes, you're unprepared. <laughs> if you have no knife and Velcro shoes, you're still going to have a t-shirt, some kind of cloth, bandana, you can twist up for cordage and be better than the uh, natural cordage. If you don't have a t-shirt on, <laughs> <laughs> some kind of piece of clothing that you can sacrifice for cordage that's decent, you're unprepared. Now I'm going to do what any smart primitive man would do in my situation before an attempt like this. I'm going to eat some peanut M&M's. I say attempt because that's exactly what it is. It's really humid today. It's really hot. I'm beat and I haven't even burned in my uh, hearth board or made my cordage. So we'll see. It's not looking good. This is, uh, like I say, this is well past the season for peeling, and we've had a really dry year, so this may not work so well. We'll see. Not looking too good so far. Alright, this mess is all I can get off, and uh, this ain't looking good. So I really don't want to have to cord this up. I was just going to use it straight off of the limb, but that's not going to happen, I don't think. Which brings up another point a lot of people don't think about. It's time of the year. What kind of cordage are you going to have available? Most times of the year, you do have some form of decent cordage. You know, wintertime you got dead plants, which is good stuff. Summer, spring, you got, uh, you know, in the peeling season you got tree cordage. Right now, late summer, early fall, it's not so great. Some of this is just outer bark. The uh, inner bark didn't even come off with it, so not looking promising, fellas. Gonna do the as fast of a twist as I can. Nothing pretty. Just get it done. <laughs> that ain't enough. But you know what? I'm gonna try it anyway. Alright, this is a fail. Uh, that's the reality of the bow drill. Um, right now in this area, there's no viable cordage. Uh, I tried the willow that I found, and I didn't want to peel. Um, I could probably quarter it and get it off, and it'd still be crappy cordage. 